During time period two, the foundations of the American Revolution were being laid. So the key concept 2.2 is all about how this was beginning to take place. It says, the British colonies participated in political, social, cultural, and economic exchanges with Great Britain that encouraged both stronger bonds with Britain and resistance to Britain's control. Now they put a lot of different exchanges in this list. They mentioned political, social, cultural, and economic exchanges. One of the cultural changes that's really important is the First Great Awakening. It happened in the 1730s and 40s, and it was really influenced by English revival preaching. The First Great Awakening occurred basically simultaneously on both sides of the Atlantic, and that's really fascinating. That's why we call it a transatlantic phenomenon. We also call it an evangelical movement because this is the rise of evangelicalism, which will be so important in the 1800s and 1900s. You can think of the preacher George Whitfield. He was British. He comes in a boat across the Atlantic, and he begins preaching in the colonies. There, he encounters Jonathan Edwards, an American, several generations in the country, who's been preaching a similar message. Now, while this is going on, the British government is trying to draw all of its colonies into the single, unified transatlantic empire. They govern the colonies with something they called mercantilism. Mercantilism is a policy that emphasizes exports over imports. You use your colonies to make goods, and then you try to sell them all around the world. As the British ruled the colonies, they followed this practice called salutary neglect, which meant they basically didn't enforce their own laws. So the colonists got kind of used to not having to follow every single tax and custom and law. And this created a huge problem by the 1700s because the colonists just started making up their own rules. They started governing themselves. And that's the tension that's at the heart of this concept. On the one hand, the empire is becoming unified and shares a distinctive culture together. On the other, the colonies are becoming their own little universe. They're starting to become independent. They're starting to get skeptical of British oversight. One thing you have to remember during Key Concept 2.2 during this whole time period is that the Americans begin developing a distinctively American style of slavery. We talked about earlier that the Spanish were using slaves in the 1500s in Latin America and in Central America. And in the Atlantic colonies of the British, they started using indentured servitude at first. Indentured servitude is basically like debt slavery. You owe someone a lot of money, so you sign a contract and you work for them for a few years. Once it's over, the debt is paid and you're no longer in servitude to that person. But there really weren't enough indentured servants to run the system. So that's when the British begin turning to the African slave trade. They're importing slaves into all the colonies, not just the colonies in the South but there were more slaves in the American South. And it's there that really a whole ideology around slavery develops. The idea that God had separated the races deep in ancient history, that God intended for white people to enslave black people, that there's a fundamental superiority to the white race. This racist ideology becomes central to the American South's idea of itself during the 1860s in the Civil War. In recent years, historians have really turned away from focusing on just the slave masters seizing slaves and subjugating them. We focus on the slaves themselves. What kind of culture did they keep from Africa? What kind of culture did they build in the Americas? What about their music, their religion, and their traditions? It's hard to find these slaves in the sources, speaking in their own voice, but we're fascinated in their perspective. Now, all the ideas we've been discussing, mercantilism, the slave trade, they point to the central tension of Key Concept 2.2. On the one hand, the British had this huge transatlantic empire with a unified culture. On the other hand, the American colonies are starting to think for themselves. They're starting to establish their own governing institutions, their own ideas of what they could be. And that's what takes us to the American Revolution of the 1760s and 70s.